answered number 79. And the title is The Liberal Wimp Factor Post 911. Since the terrorist attack on the World Trade Center, 9 11 2001, liberals, conservatives, and even those without political leanings have been treating our illegitimate president, George W. Bush, as if he were some kind of god and the only one that can guide us through our war on terrorists. Hardly anyone wants to say anything bad or critical about God Bush. A personal example follows. I am shopping my book, How to Defeat a Conservative and I sent my query to a liberal publisher and got back this letter. Thank you for your letter of 12-6, soliciting our interest in your work titled, How to Defeat a Conservative. While we are always interested in critical assessments of the radical religious right, we already have quite a few books on our list that addresses this group. Also. You should reconsider your title, since you are needlessly constricting the term conservative. Many people would consider themselves politically conservative, yet they would not buy into the radical religious views of Jerry Falwell, Tim LaHaye, Pat Robertson, and James Dobson. The conservative political movement has a long and distinguished history. Linking all conservatives to Falwell et al. does a disservice to a fine political tradition. And that was Mr. Stephen L. Mitchell, editor-in-chief of Prometheus. My answer. Attention, Stephen L. Mitchell. I will not be changing the title of my work, How to Defeat a Conservative, have you never heard of Rush Limbaugh's How to Defeat a Liberal? My book also addresses conservatism in orthodox medicine, sexuality, politics, everyday life, as well as in religion. So even if you have 100 books on your list addressing the religious right, you don't have mine. Don't pigeonhole it, please. My book has more profound social implications than something that just fits a specific genre. Thus, I haven't restricted the term conservative at all. Also, I do deal with the political and religious conservative split. But even if it's only a societal mask, the vast majority of conservatives believe all morals come from God. Also, what long and distinguished history of the political conservative movement are you talking about? Maybe the Great Depression? Conservative penny-pinching, making America unprepared for World War II? Sputnik? Or maybe conservatism's negative treatment of the poor? Maybe it's elitist belief that the poor are here to subordinate themselves to the elites of society. Maybe you're referring to the sham 1994 conservative congressional revolution. Or maybe Iran-Contra. Maybe deregulation fiascos under Ronald Reagan. The facts are that conservatives have a long and distinguished history of looking out for number one and their cronies in business. In a communal civilization, Conservatism is pathology, and that's how it's treated in my book. Next time you read a writer's query, do him or her a favor. Don't speed read. Since 80% of all books published fail to make a profit for their publisher, it's quite clear that a lot of editors can't pick winners. And I believe it's probably due to attitudes like yours. 
with you acting as gateway to my forum, you censor my ability to shut up quintessential conservatives like Rush Limbaugh and George W. Bush. Thus, where is rebuttal? Where's the fairness doctrine? What forum can truth be heard from when you make snap judgments, prejudiced and bigoted judgments when you haven't even read my book? Again, political conservatism isn't a fine political tradition. It's pathology. And its adherents are social pests and can be destructive to individuals and their liberties if they acquire social, political, or military power. They are dangerous. Osama bin Laden is a conservative. And George W. Bush is a conservative. And they're both pathological. However, not all of us can recognize pathology. But some of us can. And we can warn others. That's what I've done with how to defeat a conservative. I try to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. It's your company's loss for not recognizing that. Patriotism is one thing, but giving up liberty, freedom, and money to ideas, causes, and inept intelligence organizations in the name of fighting terrorism or helping its victims is wrong. George W. Bush is referring to the fight against terrorism as a crusade, an action to rid the world of evildoers. Bush believes himself to be a man of destiny, ordained by God, to lead us through our darkest hours. What we, Mer we Americans need to understand in all of this is that terrorists can't destroy American democracy, but we Americans can. We can surrender our democracy by fearing to speak up against Bush's and Ashcroft's assaults on our basic freedoms. If we lose these freedoms, the moneyed and corporate plutocracy in charge of our government, now will then have total control. Must we bow down to an inept CIA, FBI, and NSA that left this country defenseless on 911? These agencies knew in the early 90s that terrorists were interested in using planes as guided missiles to wreak havoc. One should also keep in mind that the media consortium recount of the 2000 Florida vote showed that a substantial plurality of Florida's voters intended to vote for Gore. Al Gore would have won the state by 15,000 to 45,000 votes. Thus, we have a president who was handed his position by fiat of the United States Supreme Court, an undemocratic process. Yet now, George W. Bush is trying to come off as an Abraham Lincoln or an FDR. He's a man of the hour, and some wimpy liberals agree. Back in 1980, when I ran for president against Ronald Reagan, it was made clear to me after Reagan's election that if Reagan can govern, anyone can. That's how we should feel about George W. Bush, and we shouldn't let him bring on board his elitist conservative agenda to stifle our freedoms and try to create cookie-cutter citizens with his intrusive personal ID cards. In an anti-terrorist fervor, we Americans are selling out our personal privacy, civil liberties, and the internet for the myth of protection. The guarantees of the Fourth Amendment are being brushed aside. We are granting this government a power 
to control our lives that has not been demonstrated to be effective at stopping terrorism. All this in the name of patriotism. This administration has blurred the line between terrorism and dissent. Since 1999, our government has offered a reward of five million dollars for information leading to the arrest of Osama bin Laden. Kim Smitch added another ten million dollars. Yet there are still no takers, no real leads. Why? Maybe because many around the world hate our crass materialism, corporate imperialism, our war on the poor. This country, due to conservative pressure, has lost its moral soul. John Ashcroft is a liar and has a hidden agenda when he says about his critics, your tactics only aid terrorists. Mr. Ashcroft is deliberately confusing disagreement and dissent with being unpatriotic. This has been part of the conservative agenda for a long time. Mr. Ashcroft supports the abridgment of our freedoms, but he doesn't support a law giving the FBI the power to search gun purchase records to see if those detained since 911 had tried to buy guns. Can we all say, ass kisser for the NRA? The CIA has been, has had a team tracking Osama bin Laden for four years before 911. And during this time, Bin Laden used fake caravans, rode in ambulances, and never stayed in one place long enough to be targeted by Tomahawk cruise missiles. Bill Clinton ordered a strike with at least 70 cruise missiles into the coast camp near the Pakistan border, where Bin Laden was supposed to be attending a meeting of his Al-Qaeda network. But he left camp before the missiles hit. Another CIA failure. Congress gives the CIA over $30 billion a year to fail worldwide. But to be successful at spying on innocent American citizens. Can we all say lack of oversight? Ex-New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani admitted that just as it failed to heed the warning signs of Adolf Hitler's aggression in the 1930s, the U.S. failed to do enough to prepare for terrorist attacks in the 1990s. Since 9-1-1, greedy corporations or profiteers have been enjoying a feeding frenzy at the government trough. The airlines got about 15 billion. Coastal beach builders got 150 million. Biotech industries want no liability for damages if their products cause harm. Boeing got about 20 billion lease deal. And the big drug companies want to prevent competitors from making generics of their big money-making drugs. Does anyone remember God Bush promising to cut off money to terrorists? Well, he doesn't want to cut off money to crooks, though. He doesn't want to end the global money laundering done by banks. Bush's Treasury Secretary made a deal with officials of the Cayman Islands 
to protect U.S. banks and their secret accounts. Accounts of unpatriotic tax cheats, which total over $800 billion until 2004. These people are being given until 2004 to cease their illegal activities. And they won't be prosecuted for any illegal activities that they're involved in up until 2004. More ass-kissing of big business by God, Bush. George W. Bush is no Lincoln or FDR. And he isn't surrounded by a strong team. The attacks of 911 have given meaning to his usual lackey for big business life. But his bid to make himself more important is mere shadow, not substance. The increase in Pentagon spending to four hundred billion dollars wasn't needed and robs from the people of this country and robs from our economic recovery. It takes money out of the hands of we the people who are the only ones who can fuel an economic recovery. giving trillions of dollars in tax breaks to corporations in the last 30 years has given us lost jobs to other countries, downsizing, pension insecurity, hate toward Americans in foreign lands, and multinational corporations avoiding paying over $45 billion in taxes by fixing prices for transactions with their foreign affiliates. One corporation exported a $5,000 toothbrush and imported a $528 bulldozer. All of this has occurred under the watchful but deferential noses of liberals. Wimpy liberals are allowing God and George W. Bush to wage war on terror and on the American people. It's very clear where the noses of these wimpy liberals are in relationship to George W. Bush's ass. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big, overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you so lost, you lost another, another argument, argument with the conservative, conservative right-wing right -wing Republican. Republican. He, he talked, talked over you. you. He, screamed he screamed and yelled. yelled. He brought, brought out the Bible. Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture, scripture to you. You were lost because you came at him with facts, nothing but facts, and you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good, that would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read Censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read Censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every, Every time, time you get into an argument, argument with a right-wing right -wing conservative, conservative uh, so-called so Christian. Censored. Censored. That's, That's all, all you need. need. Read, Read it. it. And defeat and a conservative. conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. 
it reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Megalife 21, the hardest-hitting internet talk radio station on the planet.